Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'd like to share my January wrap up and also talk about the books that I'm currently reading and maybe planning to finish in February. I'm not sure. Let's see. So let's get into it. I can't believe how fast January actually flew by and for me the month ended the month of December ended and the month of January started with the trilogy by Lainey Taylor of the Daughter of Smoke and Bone. So I just finished Daughter of Smoke and Bone in the last days of December and picked up Days of Blood and Starlight and Dreams of Gods and Monsters the very beginning of January and basically finished them very very quickly. I have to recommend this trilogy for everyone who likes an unusual story. This is basically a plot twist a big twist on the premise of angels versus demons, although everything is not as it seems, so it's basically a story of two different races intertwining and um, battling with each other for survival, but in the beginning it's just a story of a young girl who doesn't know where she belongs in this world and is very trying to work through her emotions and trying to find where she belongs, where the world gets turned on its head and she has to come to grips with that and make her decisions based on that. So it's really a good series. I was left with a bit of a, you know, unsettlement in the end because of the way the Dreams of Gods and Monsters ended. Let me just put this down. There were some new things that were introduced in the second half of the book and like the last book in the trilogy and I feel like this universe has been left open for potential next stories but in fact we didn't get all of the closure that we needed and some of the things like kind of veered out of the way just into the middle of the last book and for me it didn't completely make sense. Next on a book that I already mentioned in my two of my past videos like very recently is Death's Mistress by Terry Goodkind which I talked about and complained a little bit in my last video about how many books there should be in a series but yeah this is how I started the month of January as well and this is a new spin-off series set in the same universe that Terry Goodkind has started in 80s or 90s with the Sword of Truth books and I definitely didn't like it so I don't feel like going much into depth with that but if you like Terry, the premise of epic fantasy and all that stuff give Terry Goodkind a go with the Sword of Truth series I would go quite far with all the books I have I have a strong belief that if you go until like the chain fire part, which is the 10th and 11th book in the series, which ends with Confessor, you're going to be quite satisfied with the way the series wraps up and you can just stop there. But yeah, some of the books in the middle of the series I never planned on revisiting either, so it's totally up to you, like what, what do you like and what do you dislike. A beautiful gem of a book that I have been so blown away with has been Ender's Game by Scott or Orson Scott Card. And guys, this book just blew me out of the water. I did not see it coming and I will recommend it to every single human being in the world. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you like science fiction or not, it doesn't matter if you watch the motion picture or not, which is actually not, not that good in my honest opinion, maybe I'll do a separate video on that. And maybe on this book as well, because it deserves all of your attention and more. And there is a genius child who is going through military training on the orbit of the Earth to prepare him for the upcoming battle of humanity versus the buggers, who are alien invaders who have almost defeated the entire planet 50 years ago or so. And uh, this story, this life that he lives, is all revolving around him becoming a great commander so that he can defeat the forces of the buggers who are threatening to destroy Earth. And it seems it has a lot of battle sequences, it's very dynamic, but the beautiful part of the book that I appreciated so much and that struck me as so important is the emotional development and environment of Ender and it leaves you with a lot of moral and philosophical questions that cannot be avoided about the nature of humankind and about what people do to other people willingly um, explaining it as the greater good and everything but in fact it's not as great as it seems and Ender is the one who gets to suffer for it 
And I loved Ender's perspective, I loved his character, I thought he was a beautiful child, I just wanted to hug him and never let him go. And I completely recommend this book to every single person on this planet, like right now. Hey guys, I have a guest! I have a kitty! We have a kitty in our uh, midst. Come here. Granny! Granny! I have a tail! Hey, are you gonna sit here? Are you really gonna sit here? She might as well, right? Hi, Granny. Another book that I read in the month of January is The Princess Bride and I always forget who actually wrote it. Yeah, it's William Goldman and The Princess Bride is the book that has been there before the movie, so the movie was actually based on an actual novel. And I have to say that I have seen the movie first a couple of years back and I really loved the movie. And now I had a chance to read the book for the Goodreads book club that I'm part of. And I enjoyed it a lot, but I gotta say the impression that the movie has left in my brain has been so strong that this book couldn't kick it out. Like, it was pretty much exactly word for word as the movie was, and that was great because the adaptation has been so masterfully done and very precise and true to the original text and the original structure of the book that I'm very happy that I read it. I'm, I've enjoyed it a lot, I gave it four stars, I have to say. Yeah, maybe if you didn't see the movie yet, then you can start with the book to kind of build your own impression of every single character, but after the iconic movie, you just can't help it. You have to, um, like, it can't measure up. I feel like the movie has been absolutely golden. And the last book that I read in the month of January was The Dark Prophecy. It's from the series of The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan, and I love Apollo. I mean, I don't care what some may say about his character, he might be a little bit annoying, but I completely love him and his development as a character and I believe that this arc that Rick is trying to build is amazing. Uh, but this second book has only warranted three stars from me because I felt it kind of lacking in emotional response, like I didn't respond to it as well, I didn't really like the direction of the plot as much as the previous book, but I believe all of this will change in the third one because this sequel has been setting a lot of things up for the next book in the series and there was major character growth for Apollo and there was a lot to learn about his background and I really appreciated all of that. I wished we would get more Leo and uh, yeah, Calypso? I want to say Calypso, but it's not Calypso. It's so freaking annoying. Every time I see the name Calypso, I'm instantly reminded of the Pirates of the Caribbean for some reason. And that's why I start doubting myself whether the name is right. But of course, it's Leo and Calypso, as I said. And I love those characters and I wish I would get a bit more of Calypso and I wish she wouldn't be so, like, involved in this book involved in her own thing. I would love to know what she can do better and I hope I will get to see that couple again because I really really liked them in the Heroes of Olympus series, like really really liked them. In general, like if you haven't read any Rick Riordan, then what are you doing with your life? You like literally need to read these books now because they're just so much fun. There's nothing better than Rick Riordan for a pick-me-up, seriously. So yeah. So those were the books that I read during the month of January. Right now I'm working on a couple of different novels. I'm making slow progress with The Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. I'm on page 170 or so and it's very dense and it's very time consuming, but I'm moving through slowly, so maybe I won't be done in February, but I will definitely kick this out of the park by end of March, so that gives me a lot of hope. Another book that I'm working on is this most gorgeous exemplar of A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Tals and I'm gonna do a separate review on it when I'm done because this book is absolutely golden but it's so good and the writing is so exquisite that I have to read it in small doses otherwise it gets overwhelming. You really need to be present for every single line of text because it's so freaking good and this is a piece of historical fiction following a man like a count, Count Rostov, who is on house arrest indefinitely in the Hotel Metropole in Moscow after the Tsar regime has fallen and has been substituted with the Red Army and uh, like 
USSR being established and so on so on so on. So I absolutely love this book and I cannot wait to see how it goes. I believe it's a total gem that everyone has to read. I'm working on two other books. One of them is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, which has been so anticipated by everyone that I made an exception for my book buying ban, which is more induced by my lack of funds than anything else. And I ordered it and I'm 40 pages away from the ending, so you can pretty much say I finished it, but not yet. And we'll see if I want to do a separate review on this one or not, I'm not sure. But I would definitely recommend it as a quality read and I'll tell you more about my impressions later. And the last book that I'm reading uh, currently on my ebook, it's called um, Angelica de Marquess of Angels, and originally it has been written in French. It's part of a series, it's the beginning book in a series by Anne Golon, and I know it has been really popular in uh, Russia quite a while back, and I know there have been a lot of movies, and I, lo I know that the heroine Angelica Angelica or Angelique, I don't know how to pronounce her name. She has been a symbol of femininity and beauty and a bit of erotica as well for uh, people back then. So I really was curious uh, what the big deal was and I started reading it. I'm like 70% through the first book. So I'm gonna finish and maybe do a little bit of evaluation on it or tell you more about it because it's interesting because it has been written in the, what, 50s, 60s, 70s? Wow, I'm so precise today. Anyway, it has been written a while back, so the image of women has changed quite a bit since then, so I find it curious what the time dictated for the book to be and how the Middle Ages are actually portrayed in the book. So that's quite fun as well. So this is what I have on my plate right now. I would love to hear what you guys are reading or whether you have any interest in any of the books that I mentioned. And I'll see you guys in my next video very, very soon. Bye!